Last year, HP revealed a brand new device called the Victus 16. It was a decent budget offering, thanks to its powerful hardware and large display, which was also suitable for creator work. Now, in 2022, we're hoping HP expands on the Victus 16, improving on its shortcomings, with Alder Lake and RTX Ampere making an appearance. The laptop is all made of plastic, which is all well and good. However, the build quality and rigidity are lacking. The lid wobbles a lot, a result of flimsy hinges. On the other hand, the laptop looks really good, with a sharp design suitable for an office setting. There is a glossy V logo on the lid. Portability isn't a strong suit of the Victus, as it weighs 2.4 kilograms and has a profile of 23.5 millimeters. The base, which has issues with rigidity as well, houses the keyboard and touchpad. Both of them are quite good, as the keys have long key travel and clicky feedback. A backlight is nice to see as well. The pad is one of the better ones that we've seen, with accuracy and responsiveness that put more expensive laptops to shame. The sides are full of ports, with the left keeping a LAN port, an HDMI 2.1 port, two 5 gigabit USB ports, one full-sized and one Type-C, along with a combo audio jack, and an SD card reader. On the other side, we have two more full-sized USB ports of the same speed. The display of the 2022 Victus 16 isn't as good as last year. While it still gets decently bright, maxing out at 317 nits, it loses the good color coverage and accuracy from last year. Purely for gaming, it's still good, having a decent response time of 12 milliseconds. The panel shows 50% sRGB coverage, and our design and gaming profile helps the accuracy only slightly, lowering the Delta E value from 6.0 to 4.0. You can find links to all of our profiles in the description below. Battery life however, is pretty good, as the 70 watt hours unit inside lasts for 9 hours and 40 minutes of web browsing, or 8 hours and 49 minutes of video playback when paired with a Core i7-12700H and an RTX 3060. Only 2 per 100 people watching this video are subscribers. If you decide to just start following us, we'll be able to reinvest more in our laboratory thus making even more helpful videos for you. Thank you, you're awesome. The Core i7-12700H is currently the most powerful mainstream CPU that Intel offers, so performance isn't an issue. Both in 3D and 2D rendering, it does better than what AMD has to offer. As for the RTX 3060, it's limited to 100 watts, which is below what the Legion 5, Asus TUF A15, and Nitro 5 offer, so performance gaps will be seen. However, at 100 watts it's not the worst, as it can still max out games like Borderlands 3 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider while breaking the 60 FPS mark. We have benchmarked the 100 watts RTX 3060 in a lot more games, all available on our Laptop Media Benchmarks channel. If you're interested in any GPU's performance, you'll find gameplay videos there. The Core i7 and RTX 3060 are cooled by a good old-fashioned setup with three heat pipes, two fans, add large heat spreaders on top of the GPU memory and VRMs. The Core i7 is excellent in short bursts, reaching 115 watts and a clock speed of 3.72 GHz on the P-Cores. However, in the long run, the CPU maintains a 45 watts TDP, while clock speeds drop significantly. We believe that it can run better, as temperatures were really low, so the cooling's definitely not maxing out. On the other hand, the RTX 3060 reaches its full potential, for a 100 watts GPU, at least, maintaining a stable TGP, while not throttling. 
The laptop was cool on the outside, with a hotspot of 43 degrees Celsius while noise wasn't a big problem, mainly because we refrained from using the fan boost option. The Victus 16 offers good upgrade options, including two SODM slots that fit DDR5 modules and two M.2 slots for SSDs, with only one of them having generation for SSD support. As always, you can check out our teardown video, to see how to access both the RAM and storage slots. The Victus 16 is a good budget option for gamers, who want a stealthier notebook. However, the build quality and chassis structure definitely need to be looked at and revised. Power management for the processor isn't ideal as well, as we think the Core i7-12700H can definitely run at higher TDPs than what we see here. Still, the Victus 16 isn't the worst you can do with your money, but there are better options either. The Nitro 5 quickly comes to mind, sporting a larger battery and higher TGP graphics. It also doesn't have structural issues, as Acer totally revised the laptop for 2022. If you feel like we didn't cover a particular area of the HP Victus 16, go over to our website, where we have a very detailed review that goes over everything there is to know about it.